Praise be Jesus Christ. We see in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 25, that St. Paul is coming to the end of his mission. He's about to be sent to Rome and be put on trial. And just reflecting on the life of the Apostle, on the obstacles that he met, and the things that worked for his favor in his mission of converting and sanctifying souls, we can draw strength for our own apostolate, our own mission, when we tend perhaps to get discouraged at not seeing so many fruits. Because in fact, the apostle of the Gentiles didn't convert everyone that he ran into. Just considering the incident at Athens, there were very few who were willing to listen to St. Paul's words. So how much more us, who are a lot less holy and inspired than St. Paul, should we expect to convert every single person that we run into? But the obstacles that St. Paul had in promoting the gospel and in saving souls are the same obstacles that we run into. They're typically the three that I always mention, the devil, the world, and the flesh. The devil, who of course is completely opposed to our Lord, the Son of God, and his message of salvation. But with that, we can also link men who are in collaboration with the devil. Not only is there the obstacle of the devil himself, but of men who collaborate with him, who are obstinate, set themselves against Christ and his church and the message of the gospel. They are the antichrists, as St. John would call them. So St. Paul has to deal with all of this. He also has to deal with the world, as we do as well today, the cares and riches of the world. Maybe we have to deal with it more so since it's at such a disposition, our disposition here in the Western world anyway. Then the, the, the flesh, the obstacle of the flesh, that is our own personal, man's own personal sinfulness. This, of course, clouds the mind and weakens the will and presents a real obstacle for those to receive the gospel. Now, there are also, there's also linked with this personal sinfulness the, the fact of religious indifference and ignorance, bad philosophy, bad currents of thought. And we see this especially in our own time. Just think about what is being pumped into students at universities all across America. Bad philosophy, Sartre, Nietzsche, Freud, and etc., there's just this constant inundation of error <clears throat> in the minds of youth, which present a real obstacle to evangelization. But nonetheless, just as St. Paul had to deal with these obstacles, he also had two advantages that we also have. Namely, that man, every single man, has a natural desire for God. And secondly, that God desires the salvation of every single person. This is to the advantage of St. Paul and also to our advantage. Man has a natural desire for God. It's written in his heart. Because he is created by God, lives in God, and is to go towards God. That is his natural, supernatural, we could say, destiny. But nonetheless, it, this is in the heart of man. And this is so evident, too, in the fact that we see that every single person, be he just or unjust, seeks his own happiness. And not just any sort of happiness, but a happiness without limits, a happiness that fully satisfies and that never ends. And that can't be found in anything, any created reality. 
Nothing in this world can satisfy that infinite desire that is in the heart of man. And that is an indication that all men desire God. Because only God can fill a desire for infinite and unending joy. That's who God is. And so, it is God who created us and who keeps us in existence. This is one of the arguments that St. Paul did use towards the Athenians when he said, In Him we live and move and have our being. God is not far from any single one of us. Now, not only is there the advantage of man having a natural desire for God, but above all, there is God's desire for man. God's infinite desire for the salvation and sanctification of every soul. We ought to reflect on this, that God desires our salvation more than we do. God desires our sanctification more than we do. And He can help us with His grace. And so we don't ever need to get discouraged if we see little fruit in our own personal apostolate, among our family, among our friends, among our co-workers, etc. But we just need to keep at it and persevere with prayer, sacrifice, and work. Praise be Jesus Christ.